Then I firmly attached my people's monkeys to their backs and sat back and enjoyed an exhilarating sight as each subordinate departed my office. Several monkeys screwed squarely between their shoulder blades on their departing owner. And later that day I made a point to ask each of my people the same question all of them had been asking me for so long. How's it coming? This is job enrichment for managers. When the last of them left my office that morning I sat there alone, reflecting on the things that had just come to pass. The most obvious was that my door was open for a change. Even so, there were no people or monkeys in there with me. I had achieved privacy and accessibility at the same time. For the first time in a long time, I had time for my people, but they didn't have time for me. What an important learning. The more you get rid of your people's monkeys, the more time you have for your people. That point was driven home by an incident that occurred a couple of days after the Monday, when my people got all their monkeys back. I was in my office alone, with the door open and my feet on my desk, thinking. I was thinking about the things I could do to clear the way so my people could do their things. In a very real sense, I was working for them, but I was not doing their work. At the same time, my people were working on their monkeys, and I hadn't seen them in a couple of days. Frankly, I was lonely. I didn't feel needed anymore. As luck would have it, just then, Eric came to see me about a problem. As he approached my office, he noticed that my door was open, but from where he was standing, he couldn't see me in there. Never had he seen my door open when I was in my office, so he must have assumed that I was away on a trip. When he asked Valerie where I was, she said, He's right in there. Eric was so shocked, he stammered. Well, uh, when could I see him? Valerie replied, Just go right on in. He's just sitting there. He isn't doing anything. When he came in, I realised how lonely I'd been. I greeted him warmly. Come on in. Have a seat. I'm so glad to see you. How about some coffee? Let's start at the beginning. How are your wife and kids these days? Eric's reply told me that my greeting was perhaps a little more effusive and time-consuming than he felt was called for, under the circumstances. Shaking his head, he said, I don't have time for this kind of BS. For once, I had more time for him than he had for me. My staff knew, as does anyone who's ever experienced it, how frustrating it is to work for a boss who has no time for them. So now I endeavour to always have more time for them than they have for me. That is accomplished by expanding the amount of time I have for them and contracting the amount of time they have for me. I keep tabs on how I'm doing in this regard by always noting who runs out of time first each time I meet with a member of my staff. If they're running out of time more often than I am, that's a good indicator of their increasing self-reliance. Consequently, I have developed the reputation among my staff as the most accessible manager they have ever known. They can see me as often as they wish, which is not very often, and for as long as they wish, which is not very long. This is a vast change from the time before my conversion.